Today I am finally turning the beautiful glycerite I just made into a moisturizing and soothing frosted cranberry face cream. This beautiful emulsion stars our fresh cranberry glycerite, juicy, fruity smelling cranberry seed oil, richly hydrating hyaluronic acid, and skin soothing panthenol. As always, if you'd like more information about this formulation, please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post for information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all the ingredients, and a whole lot more, but let's get emulsifying. We'll begin by combining the ingredients for our heated oil phase in a beaker. You'll need one and a half grams of glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. If you don't have this particular emulsifier, please make sure you are reading the partner blog post for substitutions and alternatives. You'll need 10 grams of cranberry seed oil, three grams cetyl alcohol, and 0.3 grams Sepamax Zen. I like to add the Sepamax Zen, which is a gelling agent, to the oil phase so that it can disperse really nicely, but it's not going to thicken anything quite yet. It will, of course, kick in as soon as we combine the phases and get in there with our immersion blender, but I find it makes heated phases a lot easier to work with if the water phase doesn't thicken up as part of the heating process. Our heated water phase features four ingredients, so in this beaker we've already got 46 grams of distilled water. To that, I will add 20 grams of a 1% low molecular weight hyaluronic acid solution. And for more information on this, please make sure you're reading the partner blog post. I've linked to some great resources to explain what I'm talking about and uh, all that good stuff. This beautiful pink liquid is our cranberry glycerite. So we're going to need 15 grams of this. So this glycerite is something that I made and I recently shared a four part series on YouTube of making it. So if you missed those, please go back and watch them. And if you'd like more information, again, please check out the blog post. I've linked to a lot of great resources there, including Lise's blog post on how to make this precise glycerite plus lots of other great stuff. And the last ingredient in our heated water phase is three grams of panthenol, also known as vitamin B5. Before we heat anything through, we're going to weigh the water phase and note that weight so that we can replace any water that is lost to evaporation during the heating process. To heat our two heated phases, I'm going to use a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'll pop both of our phases into the water bath and pop it on the stove top over medium low heat until everything in the oil phase has melted and both phases are the same temperature. Once both of the heated phases have heated through, you can remove the pan from the stove. We're going to begin by replacing the water lost to evaporation in the water phase. So we will pop the beaker containing the heated water phase back on the scale and then refer to that number we wrote down earlier and add just enough preheated distilled water to bring that number back up to the number we wrote down. Up next, we are going to pour the heated water phase into the heated oil phase. You'll notice some little powdery bits at the bottom of the heated oil phase. That is the Sepamax Zen, which won't melt or dissolve in the oil phase and that's okay. Grab your immersion blender and we are going to blend this for about a minute stopping about halfway through to scrape down the sides of the beaker to make sure that everything is getting incorporated and blended in. After about a minute of blending with the immersion blender, you can pull out the blender and scrape it down and switch to hand stirring. You want to be pretty diligent with the hand stirring at the start until it has gotten thick enough that it won't separate on you. While the emulsion continues to cool, we're going to weigh out our cool down phase. So you'll need 0.4 grams of vitamin E or tocopherol. And to learn more about the type of vitamin E that we use in formulating, please look up tocopherol in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. You'll need 0.5 grams liquid germal plus. This is our preservative. If you would like to use a different preservative, please make sure you are reading the FAQ I've written on that, different things to consider. I have linked to that in the partner blog post. And lastly, 0.3 grams Elantoin. Elantoin does have a bit of a reputation for going shardy in formulations. To counter that, I make sure to include it at a rate that is within its solubility in water. There's more information on that 
in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia, and I also include it in the cool down phase so that it doesn't have a chance to recrystallize into larger bits as the formulation cools. I read this somewhere quite a while ago and I found that it does help. Once the emulsion has cooled to about room temperature, we're ready to combine it with our cool down phase. To do this, I like to add a scoop or two of the emulsion to the little dish that contains the cool down phase that we already weighed out, and then use a little wire whisk to whisk until completely smooth. Once the contents of the wee dish are totally smooth, we'll scrape that back into the parent lotion and then stir thoroughly to combine. And with that done, all that's left is packaging this up. So for packaging, I'm going to use this airless pump top bottle from Yellow Bee. This was a gift. And to fill it, I'm kind of going to use a syringe. Um, I'm gonna use it a little bit like a funnel though, just pop it in there. Try not to bip the uh, camera with this rather tall setup. And then I just uh, drop lotion in here and then I'll use the plunger to get it to go all the way through. pretty much it. So here is one that is about a week old and you can see that it's quite a bit more yellow than the one that we just made and that's the, you know, this is sort of a yellow plus a bit of pink and this is the yellow that we get from the cranberry seed oil as the pink that we get from the glycerite starts to fade away. So yeah it doesn't get a lot of color from the glycerite and what it does get doesn't last terribly long, unfortunately. So the finished emulsion feels absolutely divine on the skin. It's got gorgeous slip and really lovely viscosity from the inclusion of the Sepamax Zen, you know, kind of a bit of a gel cream sort of feel to it. Not super, super rich, but definitely very moisturizing and really hydrating thanks to all of the humectants and of course the glycerin in our handmade glycerite. And that's how you make a beautiful frosted cranberry face cream. If you'd like more information on this formulation, including information on how to make your very own glycerite, please make sure you're scrolling down to the description box below this video and clicking through to the partner blog post where you'll find heaps of extra awesome resources and information. Bye.